Now here he is with the Hasbro Darede Daredevil. Now here he is with Hasbro's X-Men Legends series Dare Dreadpool. <laughs> Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at Kyoto's Figure Complex Amazing Yamaguchi Revel Tech Deadpool. I don't have a lot of experience with Revel Tech, but I know that I don't like the joints. I, I reviewed a bootleg Stormtrooper a while back. I know it was a bootleg, so the quality may have not been as great as a Revel Tech, but the joint setup was the same as an actual Revel Tech. I get that some people love it, but for me, it was kind of annoying. But come to this, and it's Deadpool. I, I have to get Deadpool. I have to give it a try. So getting to the packaging, it's very, very colorful. You have Deadpool all over it. All different kinds of colors, words thrown everywhere. A little chaotic, which, with it being a Deadpool box, seems appropriate in this case. On the side, pretty picture. Uh, this is number one in the series. We already know that Spider-Man's coming, and that should be cool. Lots of posability there. On the back, even more huge splashes of color. Just something everywhere. Lots of pretty pictures, lots of awesome posing. And then down here is the unreadables. It probably says something like prepare for wringing of hands and gnashing of teeth because you're about to mess with some Revel Tech joints. On the other side, kind of a classic, kind of comic look to it or, you know, poster look to it. It's just odd to throw that in there when none of the rest of the box is like that. And on the bottom, warnings and, you know, some more Deadpool goofiness. So, that's the packaging. This is the figure. The figure's about to come out of the packaging. Oh uh, yeah, now that I got the package open, you can see on the inside flaps that there's cutout word balloons. That's very, very cool. Have stuff like that. Just a little added addition to the packaging that, you know, would have been just white flaps. Fits Deadpool's character. And it's cool for guys that do ACBA. So, everybody kind of wins here. And then one more down at the bottom. Okay, and there we go, all out of the package. And you know what, for the second time this month, I'm gonna have to be eating some words. I'm gonna have to rethink my stance on certain companies. Looking at the sculpt here, everything is stylized, but everything looks good. Yeah, the articulation points do stick out, but we'll get to that here in a minute. But the sculpting for the character, the Deadpool parts, the seam lines, the separations between the black and the red, the muscles under, but the wrinkles, like it's spandex stretched over it, looks really, really good here. The armor bits, back of the hands, the forearms, the shins, the boots, everything looks good. Paint, there's a little shading to the red and I kind of wish the red wasn't so shiny. I wish it was more of a cloth-like material, but that may be me channeling my love of the movie costume. This is more comic book, I understand that, so I'm not against the sheen of it. I just kind of wish there was a contrast there. The weapons being sculpted into their holsters and the knife on the boot, kind of weird, kind of funky, I don't like that. I know I usually say I hate fiddly figures, but once you get over the Rebel Tech joints and see just what kind of poses you can get this figure into, it kind of wins you over here. But there's a very fine line there of you stepping back and going, this is amazingly poseable, and this is pissing me off because I cannot get it to do this. So, I mean, yeah, steep learning curve here. After an hour or two or six... I've finally come around to the fact that this is a great figure for action poses, for crazy poses, not standing straight up and down like this. In fact, the hardest pose for this figure to get is a neutral stance. Yeah, it's tough. N and not impossible. You can see that it's done, but you can see that he also looks a little bit funky in the shoulders. Uh, the legs kind of curve in. So there's some weirdness here. But like I said, this wasn't made for standing like this. This wasn't made for neutral posing on the shelf. This was made for double guns blazing, swords out, jumping through the air, falling through stuff. That's what this was for. The elbows are really bad. It looks like he has a mask growing right there. The shoulders, the ball right here, even though it's hidden in the black, you can still see that, you know, there's the point of articulation right there. And when you start posing it, you automatically think the arm's coming off the figure. It's meant for crazy poses. It's meant to have some thought put into it whenever you are posing him. If you're looking for ACBA, if you're looking for uh, to take some toy photography, you want some action poses, whenever you move him around, you have to be very aware of how the shot is going to be composed. Like, say you have his arm coming across, 
it looks good like this, but once you start turning it or looking at other places, you start to see it doesn't even look attached right here. From the back, it looks like his arm shoved over. And I didn't understand that until I sat here and messed with him for a long time. I understand now that in order to get poses, like some of the ones you're going to see at the end of this video, the company has to make sacrifices to the aesthetic of the figure overall. The joints have to be exposed this much in order to get this much range of movement. I mean, what, how many action figures do you have that can choke itself out? Articulation? If I miss a point, uh, you have to forgive me because there is a lot here. There's a hinge and swivel joint right under the head between the neck and the skull. Then there's another one down at the bottom of the neck gets all around. Excellent range of motion up. He looks, well, completely straight up. He can look completely straight down. You have swivel. You have tilt. Pretty much all kinds of motion. Now, the shoulders are some kind of crazy double ball, double swivel, uh, get all around kind of motion. Now you notice that this looks weird, but if you bring it to here, it looks like he's bringing his arm back. It swivels at the body. It swivels at the arm it double hinges out and it's crazy having an action figure that can do this there's the double hinge and swivel at the elbow comes all the way up same joint at the hand you can set it to hinge any direction you want it to go and then of course swivel the torso the abs are a separate piece it's just like a cover piece for the articulation the actual articulation is again one of these balls that goes all the way down to here my biggest point of frustration here is this ab cover most of the time, it's sitting to the right a little bit. You can't get it straightened out. It just floats right back off center. So that's just my OCD kicking in right there because in most action poses, it's not even noticeable. For crunch over, you can pretty much bend him completely straight over. That's freaking amazing. Back, not so much. And you have swivel. You have some side to side. The belt is actually hinged in the back same ball joints again so you get some movement there to get it up out of the way it goes around the hips are kind of weird again same ball joint but you got to kind of twist up into it to get it to come up and then there's another point of articulation at these thigh straps that's really kind of a ball again so that's kind of weird but it helps in the overall to get him to kick really high up pretty much do the splits completely then you can manipulate with those thigh joints the knees, same kind of ball, but as exposed as this is, you get all the way back. And uh, you can't get much more than that. And then you have twists there. Even the knee pads have one of those kind of a uh, same kind of little ball behind it. So you can move those, close the gap. That way they're not sticking up like that. Or you can twist it, bring it over side to side. Ball at the ankle, you get back that far forward. You can kind of get one more click right there. Then you have forward facing pin for rocker and kind of a toe joint. It doesn't get a lot of range right there, but you do get some joint there. For accessories, he has the stand. It clamps onto the figure, but I guess I need to do some tightening on it because it doesn't really hold the weight of the figure up. Speaking of stands, it also comes with this foot stand. It's kind of an effect of him sliding into something or kicking something. The figure comes with two heads. One that has just a kind of a blank look to it. Not counting the eyes, we'll get to that in a second. And then the other head kind of has a frown under the mask. You can tell that he's gritting his teeth or mad or angry or something. It has a little bit more personality to it. And then speaking of eyes, he comes with five sets. He comes with the standard set. It's kind of just looking forward, you know, kind of angry. He has a set that are wide-eyed. Then he has two sets that get squinnier like his eyes are closing further and further one's a little more open but more closed than the standard set and then finally a set that is really squinty he comes with a set that has hearts in it that's probably my favorite that's probably what put me over the edge to order this figure in the first place and to change out the eyes you have this little tool right here that you push from the back and the eyes pop out and to plug them back in you just you know line it up Make sure you have it the right way though. And then just put the peg back in the hole. And these are marked on the back with R for right, L for left, and then the number so you can have them match back up. And to store your extras, it even comes with this little plastic thing like the Hot Toys did, really. Switching out the head, pretty easy. Pops off, it's got this pin right here. And there's this extra piece in the head. Little neck piece that kind of closes the gap between the skull and the neck. I found the easiest way is to put it up in the head first 
and just pin the head on. So not a big deal there. As far as hands go, he comes with two fists. He comes with two thumbs up hands. Who's crazy and has two thumbs? This guy. He comes with two kind of open hands, about to grab something or yeah, you know, whatever craziness Deadpool's gonna get up to. And then he comes with two gripping hands with trigger fingers that you have to share between the swords and the guns. The guns, they have a nice metallic sheen to them. The grips almost have a Deadpool face or symbol on them. It's just missing the eyes on it. So I'm not sure if they were purposely made like that or if they're just like a, you know, a flathead screw, <laughs> a huge flathead screw on the grip. And then the swords, they have a nice sculpt to the handle, a nice silver finish to them. And then finally there's the scabbard for his back. It has a nice shiny finish to it and then it has the Deadpool symbol in the middle. The thing about this, the actual swords don't go in the scabbards, even though it looked like they would. It's got a hole in everything, but it actually comes with fake hilts. And you have to be careful not to put it in the wrong way. You'll see, and I don't even know if this will show up on camera, but there's a bigger side and a smaller side, like an L pin, and you have to put that in the right way. Now this does plug into the back. There's actually three holes there, and that's for the stand. If you don't want to use the clip, you can just use the pin that's on it and pin into the back. Or you can have the stand plugged into this hole further down here. Now here he is with Hasbro's X-Men series Deadpool. If you really, really wanted to, you could replace your Hasbro Deadpool with the Rebel Tech Deadpool. Yes, the stylized is there, but size-wise, he would fit in. Here he is with the Hot Toys Deadpool. Sorry. So at the end of the day, I've really come around to the Rebel Tech joint system. Yes, it's still frustrating at times, but when you hit that pose you're looking for, Mmm, yeah, it's really fulfilling. It's joy-inducing. It brings a smile to your face because most action figures you already have can't do the things that this figure can. If you go back to my Stormtrooper review, which is a knockoff Rebel Tech, but it's still using the Rebel Tech system. It's still using the basic sculpt of the Rebel Tech. I didn't like it. It's stylized. It does things that I don't picture a Stormtrooper doing, is what it breaks down to. Because with Star Wars, I have this picture in my head, and it's realistic. It's the movies. It's pulling from one canon. Deadpool, on the other hand, you can pull from the comic books, you can pull from cartoons, video games, and then there's the live-action movie. With the comic books, there's been so many artists draw Deadpool through the years that you could probably take the Rebel Tech here and match it up at least closely to some artist in the past. It's the same for the Hasbro Marvel Legends, same for the Toy Biz Marvel Legends, but there's so many iterations of Deadpool that it doesn't bother me that this figure is stylized. And then the articulation. Like I said, it's still frustrating, but it feels like Kyoto said to hell with aesthetic. Yeah, the joints are going to be ugly, but you know what? You can put this bastard into any pose you want to. If you can think it, this figure can probably do it. It may take a little work, it may take some twisting, some turning, uh, but man, getting this figure cross-legged with the elbows into its chest, hands still at its face, or it can touch its own toes with its legs straight, or he can bend completely over and look straight forward, it's, it's an amazing piece. And with this figure, I finally realized that with each new release of a character, I look at it as, will this replace the one I have on my shelf? And that's what this amazing Yamaguchi line is. It's the start of a whole new display. The Spider-Man that's coming out next year, it's in the same stylized kind of look, but it's going to move amazingly, like how you picture Spider-Man in your head. Like how you want your Marvel Legends Spider-Man to move, to articulate to pose. This is like a revelation to me. This is like a new beginning of my collecting career, quote unquote. I'll still have my Marvel Legends shelves. I'll still have my Deadpool in that shelf, but over on the Rebel Tech shelf or the stylized shelf or whatever you want to call it, I'll have this Deadpool. I'll have the Spider-Man coming up. I'll have whatever figures that are coming after that, and they'll be just in the craziest ass poses that you can imagine. I like this figure, I recommend this figure, but it's not for everybody. Think about it long and hard before you order it. It's going to be different for everybody. So, if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the foosh.